Hey guys, welcome to today's episode and we have Star McEwen and she is an intermittent fasting queen and she loves doing it. And today we're talking all about intermittent fasting, what to do, what not to do, what she loves, what she hates. So Star, welcome. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it and I'm excited to be here. So tell me a little bit about your story and your intermittent fasting lifestyle that you've created for yourself and what does a day in the life look like for Star? Well, just a real quick of what brought me to here. Um, I have a, you know, a background and I, I, the whole having kids, being able to lose weight, gain the weight, lose the weight, you know, with, with babies and stuff like that was able to basically maintain my weight within my twenties, hit my mid thirties. Don't know what happened. I was a personal trainer, CrossFit instructor, uh, did zoom. I was a Zumba instructor, did it all. Um, and then the weight just started like kind of packing on at about 35 ish years old and it just kept coming. And I feel like just every year it was just more and more. And I was getting to the point where I was basically obese and it was a really hard spot to be at when you came from being basically fit most of your life. So what brought me to fasting was like, I can't even help myself. I don't even know what to do anymore. I'm 210 pounds. This doesn't make any sense. Like, I just felt like I was struggling so bad. I had a best friend tell me from high school that texted and told me that she read this book. Um, it really helped her understand intermittent fasting and it's a lifestyle to her. And she said, hey, you know, try this. And I'm like, well, what else do I got to lose? And so I just resonated so much with it where I was like, wow, that sounds like me. Like, that sounds like me. And then, um, and she was the same, like 210 10 pounds or whatever and five foot, you know, five and. And so I'm like, man, I just, this sounds so much like me and and she's lost all this weight. Maybe I can do it too. What, it, you know, and I kept reading the book and basically it was like, all you have to do is delay your food. You don't have to deny yourself food, just delay when you're eating it. So don't wake up right away and think you have to have your coffee or your latte or your energy drink or your bagel or whatever, or your protein shake, whatever. Don't even just, just don't have any of it. And I'm like, well, that's pretty easy. Just drink water. Okay. There are a couple things you can have. The biggest, biggest thing and the biggest misconception I've seen with fasting and a lot of things that people don't understand is when you're fasting, you need to be clean fasting. And so that is like, wake up and drink plain water, black coffee, black tea. If you're having anything outside of that, you can have plain sparkling mineral water. That gets complicated, so I don't mention it too much, but you can have that. But basically, it's like I just stick to plain water. Like even sitting here, I've got this giant hydroplast. You know, I, I drink plain water until I can eat a meal. So instead of waking up and spiking my insulin right away and, and my, my blood sugar right away and dumping a bunch of insulin that my body has to deal with, I just wake up and drink water until I can eat. And that's exactly what I did four years ago. I lost 81 pounds by living an intermittent fasting lifestyle, and I've kept it off for over four years now. Um, I found intermittent fasting on August 19th of 2019. And by February 2020, I had lost 60 something pounds. And then um, within that year, so in less than a year, I lost the 81 pounds and I've been sustaining it since then. And to me, that's the key is sustainability. Anybody can lose weight. Anybody can go on a calorie deficit, lose weight. But can you sustain it? Do you feel good every single day? Do you feel good in your clothes? Is your health good? Because my health was deteriorating and going to pot. I was on high cholesterol medicine, thyroid medications, antidepressants, you name it. I was on it. Not on any of that anymore. Um, my blood work, impeccable, you know, so many things. So fasting is healing. And I think that's what people need to understand. So it's my, my slogan is you fast for your health and then you eat for your goal. Everybody in the world should fast for their health. We all care about our health, right? We're never going to stop doing that. So let's keep our insulin levels low in the morning, drink water, and then we try to eat for our goal. So instead of mindlessly snacking on crap all day, now I don't do that. So the day in the life of Star is I wake up, I grab my hydroflask, I come to my little office here, I start working, and I don't know when I'm going to eat. Like there's no... like. Getting fasting protocols out of your head is huge. So just waking up and just going, okay, I need to keep my insulin level low because if the whole 
if, if you understand insulin too, we need insulin to stay alive. Like we, we all have to have it. That's why there's type one, type two diabetics. But even with the type two diabetic, you can reverse your type two diabetes by intermittent fasting. You can get off that metformin. You can lower your insulin intake that you're having to take by starting an intermittent fasting lifestyle. And by starting it is just waking up because here's the, here's the kicker. If you slept, you fasted. Everybody in the world fast because we all sleep, right? So unless you have insomnia and that would be horrible. Um, but so everybody does about what? A six, six hour sleep and six to eight hour sleep. And then they eat for the other 16, 18 hours. Flip flop that. Like think about that some. So it's not about having to fast these astronomical amount of hours and do this, do that. It's about being mindful I'm keeping my my blood sugar low so I don't have too much insulin. Because if you have too much circulating insulin, if you're eating or drinking something all day long, you're spiking your blood sugar, which is dumping insulin. And if you're in, your insulin stays high to bring your blood sugar down, okay? So then if, but then you eat or drink something else, guess what? Blood sugar goes up, more insulin comes out. And now you have so much circulating insulin that you're never going to be able to tap into your stored fat. So if you're going to the gym every single day and working your butt off and you're on a diet and you're not seeing any results, it's probably because you're spiking your insulin with your three to four, 500 calorie meal every three to four hours. Stop doing that. Stop spiking your insulin. Your insulin is storing your fat. Don't, don't do it. We don't need to do that. The goal is to tap into our stored fat. So we want to deplete our everything we have stored on our body and our in our liver, our glycogen, we want to deplete all that so we can finally tap into our stored fat and burn the stored fat we have on our body. But the only way to do that is to keep our insulin levels low daily. So that's why it's a daily fasting. It's a daily lifestyle that you're never going to stop. So when people say they try fasting, we don't try fasting. You try caviar, you don't try fasting. Fasting is a lifestyle. It is something you're going to do forever for the rest of your life. So a day in the life of star, that's just kind of it. I wake up, drink water until I can actually eat. Um, I do keep track of my fasting windows just for, you know, my my page and stuff like that. Um, and I do fast somewhere between 18 and 23 hours every day. And I've done that for the last four years. Um, I go out of town, I go to Disneyland, I go on vacations. I am a busy, busy mom and anybody can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it because I'm, I feel like I'm just as busy as the next guy. All right. I'm going to ask a couple of questions for you. And this first one um, says, while the safest bet for maintaining your fast is black coffee, I simply can't, I simply can't do it. People, some people like me simply can't take, can't stand the taste. For those like me who can't live without creamer, what do you suggest? And not having coffee is not an option. I've tried everything to have black coffee. It doesn't work. Can I choose high quality grass fed dairy and use as few additives as possible? What are you what are your thoughts to go get over this? Is basically what she's saying. That's a tough one, and you're not gonna like my answer, but just do it. You have to clean and fast. You have to kick it out. I have so many testimonials from my clients, from other people's stories. As soon as you click, kick that creamer, I promise you, you will feel the benefit of fasting. And you need to look up autophagy. And what autophagy is, that's what's happening when we're clean fasting. And we're always getting the benefits of autophagy as long as you're clean fasting. So you, that's cleaning out all the bad old dormant cells in our body, the cancerous cells, the dementia, the Alzheimer's, all the, getting the inflammation out of our body, clearing out that free, the insulin, everything. That's what's happening when you're clean fasting. So if you're feeding your body, even that little bit of creamer, you're, bought, you're keeping yourself in the fed state. You don't want to do that. So that's one of the myths with fasting, this whole like, oh, as long as I'm under 500 calories, I can have it. No. I can drink bone broth. No, the answer is no. And I can testify to you over and over again that if you just commit to it for 30 days, I promise you, you will feel so much better in those 30 days. You'll lose weight immediately. 
that you'll be like, that damn creamer is not worth it because it's just not. So here's the thing with the black coffee. All black coffee is not created equal. It took me like eight different brands to figure out what I could even stand to drink black. I was one of those people in the beginning that boycotted coffee because I was like, what do you mean I can't have like my caramel macchiato with all my cream and my sugar and all my stuff in it? Like, I don't want it. So like I would just I completely was irritated that I couldn't have it. So I just said no to it. Cold brew is the other option because it is not as bitter. Um, You can also try putting some Himalayan salt into your black coffee and that could kill out the bitter taste to it. But cold brew is is a a really good switch but i it's obviously not hot but you could still it could and because it, it makes it more low acidic and all that too so you can you can make your cold brew and then heat it up you know you could do that but i know it's not like i i tell you all like i've heard every freaking excuse in the book and i have made every excuse up in my head in everything you know so i know i know i know i know but i promise you as soon as you kick that creamer like i have people that won't even kick out like the creamer that the powder kind because they just don't understand why that powder added to the coffee is is breaking their fast but it does and i just i can testify it's just just do it just do it either say no to your coffee or you can again you don't have to deny yourself the coffee just say i'll have it later so instead of having that coffee in the morning the way you love it have it later but with your milk don't break your fast with the sugary drink ever super bad for your blood sugar so don't don't do that i always recommend you really must break your fast with a meal or a very high protein snack that's like number one rule to fasting Mm. this next one's from Kristen c in hobart indiana i did if about two years ago and lost a good amount of weight if lowered my cholesterol which was my main reason for trying it i was doing very well with if until i tried to quit smoking while doing it and ended up stopping IF and gained all my weight back plus more. Well, now my health is terrible and cholesterol is very bad. Um, And then she kind of goes on and she she says that intermittent fasting isn't a diet, it is a lifestyle. So talk a little bit about someone who, and we're hearing this a lot, it sounds like, you know, if you're not part of our Facebook group, um, you guys really need to join it. It's called Intermittent Fasting and OMAD Group. Uh, it's These different questions come from there, a lot of them, or you can always email questions at chantalrayway.com because we love to hear from you. But what I'm hearing so many people say is like, I did intermittent fasting. A couple things happened in my life, like for this girl, um, she decided to quit smoking. And then it was like, oh, well, I can't quit smoking and do intermittent fasting. So she cut that out and then gained a bunch of weight. So what kind of tips can you tell people for kind of getting themselves back on track where they're like, and and we're hearing people who are like, I had such great success. I was doing really good. And then this happened. And now they've hit a wall. Can you give any tips for getting back on? Sure. And my biggest thing is when those things are happening, because I mean, I have had clients who have had, you know, their mom died during our thing and, you know, they still stick to their fasting protocol because we all go back to like, um, it's an emotional thing, right? Like, like we eat and have that emotional like connection and everything. So it's really hard to stay on course when stressful things are happening. But we just need to remind ourselves that our health matters more and no food comfort is going to make like everything better. So I always tell everybody, try your dangest to take your pain, your frustration, whatever's going on, take it out on the fasted hours. So if you want to go to the cupboard, go for a walk outside instead. I will literally get in my car and go run errands, unnecessary errands, just to stay out of the house, to stay busy. So staying busy is key, you know, during all those emotional things. But if you do, you know, get off a little bit or whatever, here's the thing. Again, you're still fasting because you sleep. So what you have started to do is wake up and not be as mindful. You're kind of just like, I don't even care. Like, I'm just stressed out. Everything's sad. Everything sucks. Whatever. I'm just going to eat. So you just have to really try to remind yourself, like, 
No, I live an intermittent fasting lifestyle. So it's not something I'm going to start and stop. I can adjust it though. You know, you always can adjust it. That's why I say don't stick to a fasting protocol like an 18-6 or a 24 or something like that. Be flexible. Focus on today. So if you have gotten off the fasting boat a little bit or whatever, you just wake up and be mindful, grab your water or your black coffee or whatever, and be like, today I'm going to get to 10 a.m. I'm going to stay busy and not eat until 10 a.m. And give yourself that little goal. Like, that's the thing is like, nobody will be able to do this for you. Like, you're the only one. Like, I talk to myself like a crazy lady all day long where I'm like, because I'm like, diet brain is always getting me like, star, are you sure you're eating enough protein? Star, did you do this? Star, did you do that? And I'm constantly like, no, I'm listening to my body. I don't need this. I don't need that. So instead of focusing on macros and calories and protein, it's just what does my body need? Focus on high protein meals, eat whole foods, stay away from sugar, stay away from processed foods. That even means Trader Joe's processed foods, guys. I'm pretty sure everybody in the world thinks as long as it says Trader Joe's on it that it's super good for you but it's not. (laughs) If you read the ingredients, like the seed oils are so bad for us, so inflammatory. And like the chips at Trader Joe's, but everything has like sunflower oil and this seed oil and this, it's like, so just remember processed foods, not so great. But if we're eating whole foods, if we're eating fruits, vegetables, potatoes, that's why carbs and things like that don't matter. It's just whole foods matter. So you don't want to go get a keto bar. You want to eat a steak if you're, you know, going to eat protein or meat or whatever. Like you don't want to be grabbing the quick protein shakes and and all those types of things all the time. Like think whole foods. And it's hard because we're all busy. You know, meal prepping is hard, but we still have to do those things even as intermittent fasters. But the flexibility we get with fasting is what I love. Like I was just out of town this past weekend eating out every single day. Yesterday, I had an 11-hour eating window. That's the flexibility you get with fasting, where some days I'm, for the majority, I would say 90, 95% of the time, I'm one meal of the day. I eat one main meal, but then if I want another snack or if I feel like I need something else, you know, later, even if it's a small something, I might have it. Some days I might have a one-hour eating window. Some days I might have an 11 hour eating window. So it really just depends flexibility. So if you get off your rocker a little bit with fasting to get back, take it one day at a time and tell yourself, no, I am committed to this lifestyle. This is, I'm always going to care about my health. Who cares about our weight? Like I might not care to be a size two when I'm 60 years old, but I'm always going to be an intermittent faster. And if I stopped being mindful at this point. And if I let myself eat two meals a day and have an 11 hour eating window every single day, I would be 210 pounds again. So that's when people say, ah, fasting didn't work for me. And blah, blah, blah. yeah, if you stop fasting, you will gain it all back. That's why we have to stay mindful, stay disciplined. Like, I think the biggest thing for me is like, when I feel like I want to get on that boat of eating more, I will go look at pictures of what I looked like when I was 210 pounds. And all those emotions come flooding back of how I felt back then. And I'm like, oh, heck no, I am never going back to her. I am healthy now. My cholesterol is in check. My thyroid is working again. I'm not on thyroid medication anymore. They told me I had Hashimoto's, everything under the sun. Nothing now. I have nothing. So intermittent fasting for my health is what keeps me going because I want to stay healthy but the bonus is just your weight staying in check. Honestly, like I fast for my health and then the weight, like once you stop focusing on the weight side of it and I'm here just for weight loss or people are always like, well, or this is what I did. I would tell myself, well, when I get to my goal weight, I'm going to be able to eat two meals a day and have long eating windows like normal people. Nope. I got to my goal weight and I do exactly what I did when I was losing 81 pounds. I do exactly that right now. I still eat one meal a day. I maybe once a week, maybe twice a week, eat two meals. You know, sometimes I'm I'm so flexible. But again, I'm in maintenance. So people can't like copy what I'm doing. I'm four years in. If you're a week into fasting or a month into fasting, your stuff's going to look a lot different. So taking it all slow and one day at a time, 
Um, another really key thing to ask yourself is when you're getting ready to eat something, I want you to ask yourself. So, so I tell my clients, I want you to ask yourself, is this window worthy food? If you're getting ready to put an Oreo in your mouth, is that window worthy? Next question, is this food eating for my goal? So you have two questions to ask yourself when you're getting ready to open your mouth. I don't give a crap what time of day it is. I want you to ask yourself this. Is this eating for my goal? If your goal is weight loss or to get healthy or out of inflammation and you're getting ready to eat a double cheeseburger from McDonald's, is that eating for your goal? No. Is that food window worthy? No. Now you can choose to still have the McDonald's, even though you've answered both those questions, but do you really want to feel, you know, like, so it's like when I ask everybody, fasting is hard, right? Like when we're fasting and we're, we're in those fasted hours, our bodies are working hard. How do you want to repay yourself for working so hard? How do you want to repay your body? Your body just regenerated a bunch of new clean cells in your body. Autophagy worked and got out the old cells, right? Now you have all these new fresh cells. What do you want to pump into them? A McDonald's cheeseburger or a cheeseburger that you made at home? So yes, we can still eat the foods we love and lose weight. We just maybe can't have McDonald's. We can still have a hamburger or a cheeseburger. We just need to make it at home. So making little tiny switches like that helps a lot. Do I still eat fast food? Yes, because I'm a normal human and that's what I do. Um, I'm also a freaking sweet addict. And so I have to like limit myself there because sometimes I'm like, ah, I'm a faster. I can have whatever I want. And I, before I know it, I'm eating sugar every single day. And then my fingers start like feeling puffy and I start immediately, I start swelling up and I'm like, sugar is so bad for you. So then I'll do like a no sugar challenge or whatever and be like, come on people who wants to do this with me to keep me like motivated. So it's literally, it's just a, it, for me, it's a fun lifestyle. Every single day is different. So it's fun. I don't have to stick to anything. I can do what I want. I'm not on a diet. I literally just know that I need to eat for my goal. I need to pick window worthy foods. I need to eat whole foods and I need to stay away from processed foods and sugar. That's it. Like those are the only things you need to be thinking. And then this lifestyle will work for you no matter what your occupation is. Like no matter what, I've had everything from doctor clients, lawyer clients, everybody, this lifestyle, I promise you, whether you work nights and whatever, I've had everybody under the sun, you can do it. You can make the lifestyle work. I'd love for you guys to go to our Facebook group, the Intermittent Fasting and OMAD group. We're doing a sleep contest. We want to see how your sleep is doing. And if you've been out having fun and it's time to get your health routine back, then sleep is a really, really big part of it. And so we're going to do a little bit of a sleep contest. Go if you've got like an aura ring or something like that, you can post how much you're sleeping. But sleep is so key. It's the one thing that I feel like I've got so dialed in. And the only reason is because of my favorite product, which is the Magnesium Breakthrough by Bio Optimizers. It's the only one that contains seven forms of magnesium and it helps you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refreshed. It's a total game changer, and just so you know, it's a 100% money back guarantee. So if you don't love it, just return it, get all your money back. But I'm getting you 10% off. So go to magbreakthrough.com slash wasteaway, enter the code wasteaway for 10% off any order, and this special offer is only available at magbreakthrough.com slash wasteaway. Don't forget to put wasteaway for 10% off. So I want to talk about coffee cream one more time because we just get such an insane amount of questions. And this is really such a big con controversial point for people. And, you know, one of the things that I say is I actually decided to try it um, where I added some coffee creamer. I just added some coconut milk, some cream, coconut cream that had no guar gums because if you look at most of the coconut milks that are in the can, um, I try to find only something that just has coconut cream or coconut milk in it and nothing else. It's very difficult to find it because guar gums um, and the carrageen are just so bad for you and they're not good for your gut at all. Um, and just so you guys know, I tested it out because I kind of for me, eat drinking black tea, I can't even put anything in it. Like if you paid me, I couldn't put like sweetener in it. I just 
think that's disgusting because I've trained myself to just drink black tea or black coffee. With co- black coffee, like you just said, the only time I can drink it black, it has to be the perfect coffee. So you have to find the coffee that is really, t- there's only a few out there and I'll put some that I have that I like in the notes, um, in the comments, but you want to find ones that it's, you know, A, free of mold, mitocot, my, my cut, I can never say that word. It's my cut, mycotoxins um, and pesticides and stuff like that. But finding for me, a medium roast is my favorite coffee to drink black. Like if it's too light or if it's too dark for me personally, I have a hard time drinking it black. But I tried to start adding some coconut milk in and I actually gained like five pounds doing it. I did it for like a couple of weeks and I literally gained like five pounds. So to me, when when you're saying this, that I've already tested it. And you definitely, if you're going to have that cream in your coffee, there's a good chance you are going to hold on to five pounds or more. Um, but I want to read not only that, but it makes the fast, it makes the fast harder. It makes fasting harder when you put the cream in your coffee. I know in everybody's head, they'll think like, oh, but if I have that little bit of cream, that the heaviness, the fat, it'll keep me fuller longer. I mean, I've heard every, you know, reasoning that people want to keep it in there. So my, my, my thing is, is I challenge you. I challenge you to 30 days. Hell, I challenge you to two weeks. Like, I challenge you to take it out. Challenge yourself to just not have it. You can have it later in your eating window, but don't have it in the morning. I promise you, you will lose weight. All right. I want to read this question from Carissa Jenner in Shaker Heights, Ohio. She says, I do heavy cream in my coffee. I hate black coffee. The fasted state isn't on or off. It's common sense. A little tiny bit of fat And within an hour, then your body burns it off and boom, back to fasting. So black coffee isn't water. I don't think you should be sipping on black or cream filled coffee all day either if you want autophagy. Autophagy is always happening. And if you are doing OMAD and having a coffee or two within your fast, I'm sure it's no big deal for that purpose. Remember that dry fasting is twice as powerful as water fasting. What is your thoughts on dry fasting? Do you ever do it? Are you a proponent of it? And what are some of the pros and cons of doing dry fasting? That false. Like you there and dry fasting, please do not dry fast. Like that's not fasting as a lifestyle. So this isn't fasting as like a quick fix diet. This isn't fasting uh, as the fasting that everybody thought of 20 years ago. Okay. So this is different. There's lots of new studies done. There's a huge study in the um, New England Journal of Science or Medicine, whatever that one's called, um, which I could send you all these things, but like there are literally like so many new articles on everything, but like, no, like you're always getting autophagy if you're clean fasting. So as soon as you put something in your coffee, you are no longer in the fasted state. Sorry, you're just not. You've already, you spiked your blood sugar. You've released insulin. That is our our goal to not do. We do not want to spike our insulin because we don't want to stay in the fasted state. I used to wear a CGM. I have tests over and over again on my Instagram with all this. Um you drink something, you test your CGM, your blood sugar is going to spike. If your blood sugar spikes, you release insulin. So every time you, you, you drink something that has that creamer in it, yeah, if you only drink it within 30 minutes and it spikes, then yes, it's going to come back down. Obviously, um, you're going to come back down to a baseline, but that doesn't automatically just mean you're back in the fasted state. No, you already broke your fast by putting the creamer in your sugar. So you're just no longer fasting. That's when your eating window started. Sorry. Uh, don't dry fast. Stay hydrated. Drinking water is key. Um, and for the coffee people, I know. I get it. I understand it. I hear you. I validate you. 
but I can, I just, I have the testimony of me and everybody else that, that clean fast properly. And there's just, there's just no, no going back. There's just no any other way for me. It makes the fast so much harder when you put anything in your coffee or anything in your tea or have your diet Coke. None of that is fasting. That you're, you're in the fed state if you spiked your insulin. So. All right. One more question. It's from anonymous. After a 24 hour fast, does anyone experience a pooping problem phase loose stools or diarrhea after eating or constipation after a few days later? Um, yes, that can all be common. They'll call that the a dumping phase sometimes too. Um, it It's really just like your body is releasing stuff. So you just obviously have to roll with it. Um, sometimes people will say, oh, I don't like to fast because as soon as I eat, um, I go to the bathroom right away. That can happen. That can be a symptom in the beginning of fasting. Like your your gut is trying to get you to what you're doing because if your gut is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get our gut microbiomes healthy. We're trying to, and and by clean fasting and giving your body and gut rest, like people that have like Crohn's disease, like and intermittent fast, like that's not like one of the only ways they can even live with their Crohn's disease is by intermittent fasting because it gives their gut a little bit of rest. Um, people that have PCOS, this is for you. Intermittent fasting lifestyle is for you. You can get pregnant. Your hormones are out of whack. You got PCOS, start intermittent fasting. You'll be pregnant. There, there's testimony, testimony, testimonials after that of people with PCOS can't get pregnant, start fasting. I'm telling you guys, you fast for your health, you eat for your goal, you make this a lifestyle. And, um, but the dumping thing, that's, yeah, I mean, that's normal. It, it will, can, it will get better. The longest, the, you know, a 24 hour fast too, that's really not even a longer fast. I know that sounds terrible to say out loud because it sounds like a really long time, but if you're new to fasting, that would sound like a really long time. But like, like I've fasted 42 hours. That's like the longest that you're kind of supposed to go as a daily lifestyle. Um, there you can go longer for health benefits, and if you're under doctors, whatever's. But for for fasting daily lifestyle purposes, we don't want to go over a 42 hour fast. Um, so in there, I've had that that happen where you know you've I've fasted for 42 hours and then I eat and like I'm right in the bathroom. Um, so it's kind of like what you break your fast with after those 24 hours that will kind of matter. I mean, if you're having like salad and stuff, yep, you're going to be there real quick. So like, it, it's just kind of pretty, I don't know, our stomachs can just be wonky sometimes, but don't ever be like, oh my gosh, I just went to the bathroom. I guess I can never eat a salad again. Nope. Your body just today felt like that. It doesn't mean it was the salad. It just means you fasted this long. Maybe it happened. It was a fluke. Everybody tries to blame fasting when a weird thing happens and it's not always about that. So. Um, so I read a book called One Meal and a Tasting and what it's about, it's all about after I've interviewed thousands and thousands of women and that are intuitively thin, they actually didn't even know they were intermittent fasting. But if I literally just walked around with them, I asked them to take pictures, what did you eat? And I'm telling you, this book, it's really eye-opening because I have quotes from all of these women and you kind of said it too. It's like, if you're trying to lose weight, these people are basically eating one meal and then a tasting. And, you know, the, the amount of food that we're thinking about that we're eating is just a lot of you, when, when I'm hearing these questions, like I'm not at the weight that I want to be, blah, blah, blah really you're eating too much food. And I would love for you guys to try doing the clean fast. Um, like I said, I tried to do it the opposite way just because I wanted to try it. And I gain weight doing that. So really try, you know, maybe instead of having coffee, um, you know, doing the tea, because I think drinking black tea is a lot easier than drinking black coffee. Um, but talk about oh, black green tea. Black green, green tea is also uh, sorry to cut. Yeah, you go off. ahead. Black green tea. You can also because some people like green tea, so you can do black green tea too. Just no kind of like herbal gray or jasmine tea. I like, can't do anything like that. But 
but green tea and black tea is fine. And I'll throw out there too. I can't even do black tea on um, fasted. It makes me throw up. Like I tried to do just black drink like, water. Yeah, I just that's like why I stick to water. I do sometimes get so sick of water. And so like I will drink the black coffee sometimes, you know, I'll make a cup or if it starts getting cold around here, I'm like, oh, I want a hot cup of coffee. But then for the most part, I don't I don't know. I just go back to water, which is funny because I've never been a water person. Never. Like I, I maybe did good to drink one bottle a day before fasting. So I think that's helped a lot, too. But that's so good. Um, so yeah, talk about a little bit more about this one meal and a tasting. I've kind of heard you say that a couple of times when you're talking about, you know, if I want to lose weight, I'm kind of in that prime. If you're just eating that one meal or you're doing the one meal and a tasting, expand on that. Okay. Have you ever been to a fine dining restaurant, like a real fine dining restaurant where you're there for like ever because you get there, you get your wine, you get your hors d'oeuvres or your appetizer, then you get your dinner salad, then you finally get your entree that you actually ordered. Then after that, you get coffee and dessert and it's a long drug out meal. Okay. That's what OMAD means. So OMAD does not mean that I only eat one plate of food. Yes, I eat one entree. I eat one main meal. So I eat one giant hamburger with something else or whatever. I eat my main meal. But then later, if I'm hungry, I might have some cottage cheese and pineapple or avocado toast. Or at that point, maybe I would have, uh, I drink a nutritional shake. It's not really a protein shake. It does have protein in it, but it's actually nutrients and nutritional has mac micronutrients in it and antioxidants and stuff. I'll drink that afterwards. Um, sometimes I might have a dessert because I have a sweet tooth. You know, I might have cheese and cracker. I mean, you know, I'm whatever, but my main meal is just one meal. So that's why like some days my window might be, I might be so busy working all day long. I fast 22 hours and then I might eat for one hour and then I'm done. I don't, I, I don't just don't want to eat anything else. And that's the other thing. Your, your hours do not need to add up. 24. So if you fast for 20 hours, do not think you need to eat for four. If you fast for 18 hours, do not think you need to eat for six. Your hours do not need to add up to 24. Sometimes I fast for 24 hours and then I eat for three. Does that mean there's 27 hours in a day? Nope. So your hours do not need to add up to 24. Um, so that's a, a big key thing there too. I do want to say this, whatever you do, this is such a big thing for me and I have a hard time doing it all the time, but I'm getting so much better, but you should not be drinking water with your meals. You should be like, she talked about, you can have meals outside of your eating window, but honestly, when you are drinking water, if you think about it, you need your stomach acid to digest your food. So if you're drinking a ton of water with right before your meal or right after your meal, it is not going to help you to digest your food and you need that stomach acid. And I will tell you yeah, I would actually I would with. actually tell you to not drink what <laughs> my husband could never do this. I, I literally try to get him to do it. But like I don't drink when I eat. Like, I don't care how hot the food is. I might take a sip of water if it's like some really spicy food or something. But I do not drink while I'm eating because I have I have always kind of been this way. But liquid fills me up. This is my one meal or whatever. I want to eat that one meal all gone and get super full or whatever on that one meal. I don't want to get super full on soda that's blowing my stomach up or you know more water and just downing it why you know some people can some people can drink a lot while they're eating but like i just can't i literally it's like a sip here and there like i mean i'll have a whole thing of water left you know half a cup or whatever so that yeah that is a big thing people will think that they need to drink a ton of water before and a lot during and I, yeah I don't, I don't know why people so get just that. make it a goal where you a half an hour before 
Don't drink while you're eating and an hour after you're eating because you risk diluting your stomach's reservoir of hydroclonic uh, chloric acid. And it's really essential. I can't tell this enough. I have to literally tell people, no water, please. And if I do, I have them fill my water cup with that much. I'll take baby, baby sips mm -hmm. if I need it. But it's such a game changer. Well, we are out of time. Star, tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Well, well, you can find me on Instagram. That's where I'm most active. I post daily what I'm eating all day long um, and what I'm doing all day long. I also post a lot of recipes. So you can find me on Instagram at love my I F I N G life. Um, and then my website where you can find a lot of my recipes and hear my story and all my other podcasts and stuff um, will be on there too. Um, but that is the same handle. So love my life, but dot com. Awesome. Well, you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.